Yeah. With Chris Rock, that's something I definitely got to catch up on. Yeah, DVR yeah. for sure. There's so many shows that I typically watch, like Snowfall and stuff that's been uh, halted by COVID. I can't wait till that come back on. But uh, I've been yeah. so caught up with the NBA news over the last several hours, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabe, Gabe, let, let's tell them about what you do, man. Normally, you you uh you write a lot about uh you write on Hoops Habit, uh the website Hoops Habit contribute to that uh i know you do a lot of work with the rockets and uh some some interesting stuff is popping up with the rockets mm, uh yeah. maybe getting rid of one or two of their big guys man westbrook and harden but uh in, in general man what, what you've been thinking about the nba right now and how it's transitioning they the the new season's gonna come up quick and and the, the draft is uh this coming wednesday now man well what's your thoughts on all that well, I mean, anytime that money's involved, it's always going to talk. Um, I, I'm excited to see it, though, nonetheless. I'm interested to see how various teams that have been off for over several months uh, adjust and adapt to the rigors of a 72-game workload season where the margin for error will be a tad bit smaller. And I'm also in interested to see – just how the free agency period works. I think we got a preview of it during the 2011-12 lockout season. I think it's going to be a lot of willing and dealing. I think moves have already been done, and that's why you're seeing so much talk and, and, and channels across various places. It's, it's going to be very intriguing to see. And of course, what happens in Houston, I definitely have my eyes on that one. Uh, no who, who do you think is more likely to be dealt between Westbrook and Hart? Westbrook. Yeah. Um, James Harden has the key to that city. James Harden is Houston uh, in my eyes. And for them to lose Harden, I, I know that it's a possibility, especially with his contract coming up um, in the next couple of years. But I do think that he'll seek to give Steven Silas a chance and having a familiarity with certain figures in that organization um, will make him at least give them a chance and play this process out over the next year as they seek to try and win a championship with him as their uh, de facto face of the franchise. D, we, we was talking on – they was talk, we, we didn't really get involved, but they was talking on the uh, on our, our most active mm -hmm. uh, text line about Westbrook mm -hmm. earlier today. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, somebody – I think Mel brought him up coming to Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no, had that one, uh, that text scene, and had the one with uh, Sean and Anton, uh, other guys. Shout out to them. And he always like keep his ass away from here. <laughs> so uh, I just don't, I just don't know where Westbrook will be able to uh, utilize his abilities and his talent unless it is a contender. But then, like, I, uh, one of my guys like brought up uh, Miami. I was like, nah, you need to leave Miami where they are right now. That you the, obviously Houston's going to ask for all their shooters, their good young shooters, in, in order to get them uh, to get him. Uh, and that's not going to work. I think Miami is fine the way they are. Honestly, I think Miami is probably going to be the cream of the crop in the East next year, as long yeah. as everybody's healthy. And it's going to be a shorter season again. Uh, probably gonna be back down in Walt Disney World. I don't know what's gonna happen with COVID because it was reported today 140,000 people was affected. So I don't know how that's gonna shape out the season as well. Um, but I don't know, man. I feel I, I do feel bad for uh, Westbrook because he's such an exceptional talent, like a once gener once in a generational talent. He he is that, but he hasn't been able to find his home to win a championship. I, I kind of like put him and Chris Paul in the same category. I think Westbrook is far talented, more talented than Chris Paul. Chris Paul does what he, they're both Hall of Famers, but Chris Paul does what he does very well. Westbrook can just do everything, right? But he hasn't mm -hmm. been able to find a home where he can do it to go to that next level, win a championship. And any team that's going to trade from, I'm, I'm guessing, is going to be a contender. So you got to think, okay, so, you know, is this going to be the same thing that happened in Houston? Houston was a contender. They should have been able to get to the final step with him, and they haven't been able to. So I don't know what's going to be in his future. I um, uh, I think one of my buddies brought up Charlotte. Charlotte finished, what, 10th in the East? But they was 10 games behind the last place of the eighth seed. Do you think Russell Westbrook will be able to push that push Charlotte into the last spot? You know Michael Jordan loves him. 
is he willing to give up the number three overall pick to, for Westbrook and some other pieces to try to make it work? I don't know. It's 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 if it's true what's coming out that he wants to leave, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes and what that other team gives up. And will it just be another case of Houston? You know, yeah. all part of the reason why he want to leave too is because he knows that he wants to play with the ball in his hand. I think that was one of the biggest issues was the fact that it was. I always looked at the Westbrook Harden tandem as an, a one year experiment. And I think they did too. Whereas yeah. they, they were best friends. They always wanted to play together and they had that opportunity that just so came up when Paul George got traded from Oklahoma city to LA. And I don't think the marketplace was really that great for him at the time due to his contract, and it still isn't. However, if it's one thing that Chris Paul's contract has shown me and various other players, including Blake Griffin, is that no contract in the NBA is untradeable. Right. I think what the Rockets are seeking to do is they're trying to find a big man that they can incorporate within this new regime and system. Uh, when James Harden was at his best, it was always in that pick and roll, one two-man game with Clint Capella. I think he's looking for a big man who could be a Capella-like player, but also play in a pick and pop game with him and help space the floor and knock down open shots from the perimeter, which is something that he's never had in Houston. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be one of the pieces that they look for. And I think they're going to try and get some draft pick compensation for Russ well as well, in addition to a young piece or two. I don't know if Russ goes to a contender. I know for a fact that I think Russ would like to go to a contender, of course, his age, his career. But when you make this type of request and that you want out, yeah. it, it diminishes your value. Yeah. And yeah. what you know, happens remains to be seen, but it's obvious that it's going to be a lot of changes in Houston, and that's been obvious ever since D'Antoni stepped down, yep. um, Daryl Boyd decided to part ways with the organization and so forth. And so they're always going to be a team that's in the news, and like I always say, everything is big in Texas, and I think that's how they like it down there. That's why I brought up. That's why I brought up Charlotte. I mean, they're not a contender per se, but mm -hmm. they have a high draft pick. Michael Jordan is willing to do any damn thing. You know, he give them a few <laughs> stars and a drink. And they need a star. You know, yeah. huh? what do you say? They need a star to sell tickets. They need yeah. a star to sell tickets. Yeah. It's been a major they issue with exactly. yeah, so right. be Like you said, while they not, they may not be a contender. They may be a Westbrook away from the playoffs at least. And yeah, Charlotte, it's possible. that's enough. That's yeah, enough. It's yeah, yeah, so I mean, it was uh, who was the last place who made it to AFC this year? It was Orlando. Orlando, 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 right? And it was um, it, who I forget who was number nine, but I know Houston. I mean, San Antonio. I mean, uh, Charlotte was number ten. I'm going. Who I'm blanking? No, uh, the Wizards were nine. Wizards were number number nine. nine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The Remember Wizards. the Wizards? The Wizards played themselves behind the Bulls in the bubble. Because they, uh, the they lost every game yep. in the bubble. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. played yeah. themselves yeah. behind the Bulls and, yep. and one other team, I think. It might have been Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, a lot of I people mean, didn't even think they deserved to be in the bubble. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, they didn't. Of course, they didn't. <laughs> I mean, but you, you have somebody like Charlotte, you have I know Washington been wanting to move. I think Bill wants to move, but they want to move Bill. You see what Washington is able to do, they was a the ninth seed. Uh, I don't know what's happening really happening in Detroit. They probably going through a full rebuild. Uh, well, he says probably That's shit started. For Westbrook. Yeah, you really? probably because yeah. Blake because Blake is Blake coming back this season? Is he going to be healthy for this upcoming season? So I think yeah he he'll be healthy, but I I can see that because for one, when it comes to team needs, the Rockets are looking to boost their front court. Mm -hmm. Detroit is looking for a face to sell tickets. They're also yeah. looking for a point guard. And yeah. a star point guard at that. And Russell yeah. Westbrook checks those boxes. It, it, it's not really a great situation for him. I can see a team like Orlando possibly wanting well, to make bring a play for Russell yep. Westbrook mm -hmm. because they, they need to sell tickets and they need a superstar face, something that yeah. they have not had since the Dwight Howard era. Uh-huh. Well, you, you know, y'all mentioned y'all mentioned tickets. It just came to my mind how much financial reasoning may play into decisions mm -hmm. coming up with NBA teams because of yep. the, you already heard that they lost a hun hundreds of million dollars from the past season and they're going to lose more money because they're not going to have uh, crowds definitely not to capacity. They, they maybe, should. Maybe not any crowds coming up for this season. They're going to try to play in their individual arenas, but th they're not going to have crowds. So they're going to, 
a lot of money factors are going to be factor is go, it's going to be uh prominent within these teams you you got to figure with with these moves in the in the near future yeah well, they, just they, announced they, today, they just announced today that they want to have some crowds that maybe like 25 to 50 percent capacity in some areas of the arena i don't <laughs> think that works i don't like it but at this i do know for a fact a lot of owners lost money a lot of oh, oh yeah, they, yeah. Papers, Tillman Fertitta definitely lost a lot of money with the Rockets, and he's facing a, a tremendous amount of pressure from the fan base to live up to the words in which he, you know, echoed out a couple years back that, hey, I want to be a guy that spends over the luxury tax and helps James Harden win the championship. Fans remember that, and they want to know whether or not you're going to put your money where your mouth is. And then with the salary cap being lowered down, like right now, from where I look at it from a financial standpoint, the Rockets are – a luxury tax team with the cap being at yeah. around 132 million. So it, it's going to be a lot of teams with incentive to spend, if not incentive to at least get a star to attract revenue at the gate, whether they can get any little or, or big. Yeah. And there may be teams that cheapen out <coughs> bulls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And probably do some stuff on the cheap side too. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna uh we're definitely gonna see what they could do because as you said with the money wise, so is it is can a small market team afford to keep James Harden? You know what I'm saying? Are we gonna see one of these shenanigans where it's kind of like three a three team or four team trade to kind of just move pieces around because you have to think about money? It's 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 a it's a it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. Um. I will say for the fans down in Houston, and I know you're right from them, brother. Uh, <laughs> I know that Fertilla said that, talking about he was willing to spin. Listen, man, Texas is going through a thing. It's a million of y'all down there with COVID. <laughs> so you might want to hold off. <laughs> can't have everything you want right now. <laughs> you can't have everything. So uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's going to be fun. I'm just, I'm just happy that the NBA is, uh, is coming back. Uh, it's kind of weird now with so many cases. Yeah. Up. Uh, I don't know they, if it's they were really they were really ideal in the way that they dealt with the with COVID over the summer. Yeah, but they was in one spot. Yeah, I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah it, it was in one they, spot. But I, that's what I'm saying. I hope that they don't undercut that with trying too hard to get back on on the calendar. So yeah. I, I, I would think I would think if if you want to do it and you want to you you can't occupy Mickey Mouse House. For a longer period of time, like damn, y'all back already. If you don't want to do that, at least have it satellite spots throughout the country. If you want like to, three do it, or four. yeah. If you want to do it, okay, you get you up in Oak. Well, is it? Are they in San Francisco? Or are they still in Oakland? The Warriors. It's San Francisco. Not the the in San Francisco. Right. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So you want to do it in San Fran? You want to do it down in LA? That's fine. You do. You know, saying like you have what is it six divisions? You know, what I'm saying just have like maybe two spots. For each division or something like that, you could figure some some way out. Because as we see with the NFL and at the start of MLB, these cats ain't just ain't going home and just ain't chilling. Saw Lou Williams down there against the Wayne's going to see some strippers. They gonna be out and about. You gotta keep these cats can kind of confined if you want to be able to finish the season. And kudos to the NBA for doing it, but they was in one spot. They can't like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know have everybody come to our arena. For what? I mean, we're probably going to be in lockdown the next couple of weeks. It, I mean, and, and the NBA starts up in, what, six weeks? So I think the draft yeah, is next seconds. week, right? Yeah, yeah so next week. Next week. So, yeah, so you – you. I hope they understand, and it seems as if they are they, – the NBA is a forward-thinking forward league, not all the owners. But collectively, you got enough of people to kind of push it to be a forward-leaning forward, forward -leaning league. Uh, but I hope they do that because if you just got these cats just willy nilly flying around here and there, I mean, they go somebody gonna catch COVID. And it's and a few. A and it, a Rockets, uh, I mean, a Raptors player right now, not knowing where you're gonna play because they're still yeah. trying to find out where they're gonna play. Can't right? travel they're being restricted Canada. from the Canadian government. Uh, yeah. they're restricting the U.S. teams from coming in there. So Justin, that, Justin that, Trudeau, don't want our asses crazy. up there. Justin Trudeau, <laughs> don't want our asses up there. Right. You keep y'all yeah. COVID asses down. <laughs> yes, you got. You gonna have the 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 Raptors gonna end up playing in the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, you know, exactly. Somewhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I hope that I mean, a perfect example. 
all right, Toronto, you're going to be playing in New York, you're going to be playing at the Garden. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can kind of contain it and just kind of hopefully limit their accessibility of getting outside and moving around and doing what young, what, what young men do. Uh, but if they make satellite spots throughout the country for the divisions, maybe to a conference, they could probably pull it off. They could probably pull it off. But that's that's just my opinion. I do have yeah, a, yeah. I do have a TV uh-huh. show too. Okay, this is this is this is old. Not old. It's only one year old. Uh, Gab, I love history. Right, I'm a history dude. I love politics. I used to do a sports show for like 15 years. Uh, Cal produced it, so you know that's why I can run my mouth. <laughs> I have been checking out. Because oh, I think we talked about this before. Remember that on a history channel they had the the men that built America. Okay. That Carnegie Hall and all this and forth like that. So I finally found it. I've been searching for this. I didn't want to pay anything extra for the history channel, whatever the stream, whatever the case may be. Um, they had the the food that built America. So uh, yeah, had, said, yeah, I've, said I've been before. I've been searching this damn show like the big great whale, and I finally <laughs> found the son of a bitch. It's on Hulu. And uh, it is amazing. It's amazing. I hate the fact that there's not black folks in it. There's no black folks. In it. <laughs> but the uh, only thing black is there is the Hershey chocolate. Um, but they, they don't have like no soul food or nothing in it? Nothing. Nothing like this is how they made hog moles. No, they had nothing like collard greens. <laughs> they ain't had nothing about that. They, have, they didn't have no shit like that for us. But it is amazing. Um, the stories about how uh, Milton Hershey start Hershey candy. Um, the story how that t- that intertwined with um, the Mars son and father and son how they started Mars Candy, uh, post post ripped off cereal stole the idea from cereal from the Kellogg brothers, and this dude was like I don't want to say he was in an insane asylum, but he was like in his medical re- rehab joint, and it was giving these they was giving these folks like like real quick. They would like back in the like early 1900s. They would advertise some wild ass shit. Like this piece of chocolate is uh, has more nutrition nu- uh, nutrients than a steak. And they would just put the shit out there, and people would believe it. I mean, they had, you didn't have, they had, you didn't have to clear yourself with the yeah, FDA, right? Right. But they did talk about how they how the FDA was uh, invented, though. It, 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 that kind of tied into it too. Where they had a they had a candy bar called the Chicken Dinner. It's like, well, god damn, they were dumb back then. But anyway, they don't be dumb now too. But they basically, he basically was in this uh, uh rehab facility. So they was eating this grains or whatever, like breaking it up, and was feeding it to the people because the Kellogg, the the, the Kellogg brother that was a doctor, thought that it helped cure cure them or some shit. But he was like, man, this shit tastes good. All you gotta do is put milk in it. Hold on, let me steal this <laughs> and the recipe. And I'm going to go make my own. And the brother made grape nuts. And <laughs> that's how and a war started between the Kellogg's and the Post. It's a wild shit, man. It's really, really good. So anybody out there that has Hulu, um, it's called The Food That America Built. I'm on now the story of Colonel Sanders. This mother out here shooting people. It's, it's just it's amazing. <laughs> Frying chicken in the back of a gas station out here shooting folks. So, um, it's amazing. So if anybody ever get a chance, if you have Hulu, check out the food that America built. I just, would check that out. Yeah, yeah if you're just into history, if you're just into history, um, and just want to, you know, say it's just interesting because you never think about when you pick up a piece of candy, how it started or who started it, you know, or how did they figure out how to freeze food? And they have, they talk about that. You know what I'm saying? How the food, how the food industry kind of like birthed, uh, well, how one person birthed how a, a frozen food is sold. So it's yeah. very interesting. Very interesting. I definitely recommend that. But you know, another thing that's on Hulu, I haven't I actually haven't watched it yet, but I, it's relevant to us in Chicago is that City So Real series that uh, Steve James did. Mm, ain't you ain't hear about that, Jay? Lamar? No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, documentary series that uh, uh, I think it was produced by National Geographic, but it's on Hulu. I'm surprised you oh, really? see it. Yeah, no. It's on Hulu. What is it called and again? City So Real. It's basically depicting Chicago from when uh, Lori Lightfoot got elected up until uh, through to to through the rioting and stuff. From, from oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll check it out. City So Real. Oh, yeah. Right. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking at that soon myself and try to incorporate that into some future shows. But uh, yeah, yeah, I we got a two hour show, our first two hour show. <laughs> we we did a lot of talking, and I appreciate it. Dave couldn't hold on. Uh, he had some technical issues, but I thank you, brothers, for uh, bringing the heat tonight, man. Gabe, I got to get you on uh, our NBA show. We're going to start p- picking that up soon, Running With War. Uh, um, I'm going to definitely get you on there soon. And um, uh, like I said, the, you know, we said, the draft coming up, the new season coming up, so a lot of stuff coming up with the NBA, so we're going to get that going. And D, uh, you say you want to, you see, you want to go back into hibernation. So I'm going back into hibernation. You know, let you chill. Yeah, I'm going to chill for a while. Maybe I, I might pop up on the show sometime you, yeah. next year. Oh yeah, anything yeah. for you, Cuzzo. Anything for I me. appreciate you uh, coming in for the past few weeks and holding the, holding me down, man. Yeah, anything for you, Cuzzo. You know it's love right there, man. Yeah, yeah. man. So, uh, me on, Cal. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, you you a great guy, man. Let anybody know how they could uh, reach you or follow you, uh, whatever you know. Keep in touch with what you you doing online and stuff. Perfect, man. You can follow me at G Time underscore one uh, at G Time underscore the number one on Twitter. Uh, that's why I do most of my talking and stuff. And whenever I share any type of you know stuff I got going on, um, I let people know through there. And uh, you can also check me out at hoopshabit.com slash author slash G Wilkins for any um upcoming Rockets material and stuff that I got going on over there. Definitely. Definitely follow him if you went to the NBA and, and into those Rockets, man. Definitely follow Gay. Yes, yes, no doubt. And you can everybody can follow me on Twitter right there, Demons One D D E M O N Z E One. I'm on there talking stuff, usually politics or uh not so much sports because I d I done divorced myself from it. I ain't gotta follow it on more. They ain't gotta they ain't gonna be pissing me off all the time running my blood pressure up. So I know, you, I, I know you've been been pissed off the past couple of days too. Oh of my time. god, that damn Tom, uh LaRosa, Tony La, La, I mean uh, Tony Relusa. Man, listen, let me hold on real quick. But hey, we gonna call them bubbles. Bubble. Call them bubbles. I, this is real quick. You let me hop on a side soapbox before we go. <laughs> go ahead. I don't. I mean, I understand what's happening. You have Jerry Reinsdorf, who does not care what anybody says. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. It's kind of like I know people are upset, but you gotta understand who's doing, who's making you upset. Um. I don't think Tony Tony is going to step down. I don't think Tony Larusso is going to step down at all. His homeboy just gave him a job when he was out there uh, doing God knows what in Arizona. Um, but I I don't understand. It's going to be a fallout. I just I'm just not sure as to who's going to jump ship because you have players on the contract and they sign these guys, so they obviously got to be there for a particular time. I don't know what's Maybe going on. Looking at Rick Hahn. Exactly. Kenny and Rick are the two dominoes that I'm looking at. Unless something like just outlandish comes out about Tony Larusa, he's not going anywhere, right? And Jerry Reinsdorf doesn't care. That's his guy. He's trying to make up his past failures back in the early 18, 19, I mean 19, I was say 1880 shit. 1980s. <laughs> Might as well be. Man. Might as well be. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Cuzzo. Uh, he's trying to make up for his failures uh, by him firing him and him and then Tony going off and winning three World Series championships. Um, but Kenny and Rick are the dominoes. I'm I don't think Kenny's going to go anywhere because Kenny doesn't have to. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really Rick number one and Kenny number two because this is like a publicity nightmare that they're going through. But I'm not shocked that the owner is going to dig in his heels. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to free agency, and I'm not talking about free agents, free agents coming into the White Sox. I'm talking about guys who are going to have their contracts up and be like, deuces. I don't well, want we, we had already Marcus Stroman. Oh, yeah. Who yeah, yeah but you gotta, you gotta he, 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 he you may gotta, not have been in play anyway. Right. But, but he, right. but he made the statement though online. He said he, he would did. never play for him. He did. So and you, you don't, don't there are others who could feel that way. Right, and you don't want that as any kind of franchise. I don't care. I don't care. You don't want that as a corner store down the street on the block. I ain't fucking with them. You know what I'm right. saying? You don't. You don't want that anywhere, right? So yes, that was a shot. 
But like I said before, you got to understand who you're dealing with. And that shot is going to go into like a fart in the, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the, in the forest, man. Ain't nobody going to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's nothing to him. It's nothing to Jerry Ryan's doing. So I'm looking more so at Rick and I'm looking more at Kenny and I'm looking at the guys that's on the roster right now. I think yeah. the season's going to start. And it all depends on how good they do. Tony La Russa is a great manager. He's a Hall of Famer. I'll, the biggest contention is can he relate to these guys right now? But yeah. if he's giving them the X and the O's and they're succeeding, what's the what's the phrase? The uh, the, the best deodorant for losing is winning, right? You start winning, yeah. it's going to be like, hey, we all good. So the season's going to start. I just want to see how like maybe the first quarter Quarter of the season go because they lose a PR battle now, but they don't care, right? Let's see how that first quarter of the season goes. If they're winning and they're clicking, and it doesn't seem that any kind of rifts are happening, yeah. it's gonna play out. So you gotta see how it how it first starts. You gotta but see that, that you gotta start. it has to start first. It has to start yeah. first. There have been situations like that before where you've had teams that have won in spite of their managers yeah. and yep. teams that sort of formulated their own chemistry separate from the management. Right. And that may be something that has to happen with the Sox, unfortunately, because, you know, it, it. They, I don't think they, they have gotten the support that they needed by this decision being made. The fan and, base uh, makes it. You know, it, it's, it's – it's infuriating, and it's infuriating a lot of the Sox uh, fans. You look at high-profile fans like Lawrence Holmes, talking about he's giving up his uh, his, his tickets and stuff. And this, is, I, I just don't understand why, as a franchise, you would allow something like this to be about it. But you know, I'm just, I just hope that Larusa don't take a, a, a couple sniffs of old granddad and, and get on the damn ride, you know, because. Timmy, what are you doing, boy? I'll see you through that bed one more time. <laughs> we don't need him on the bed ride. With, yeah, with, right. uh, swer- swerving, man. He, you know, you got to chill, man. Yeah, you, you got to lie. Yeah, you just yeah. got to see. But you got to see what happens. It, it's going to start. It's going to start. You just yeah. got to see what happens. If they start winning, ain't nobody going to care. If they start, Spring training is going to be very know. interesting, too. Spring training is going to be very interesting because for the first time, you're gonna he's going to have to own up. And, and, and fess up and talk with the media, which is yeah. something that he's been very quiet about doing since his introductory press conference. He hasn't gotten in the know with Tim Anderson and Eloy and none of the guys on the team. He's that spring dude. training is going to be very, very interesting to watch from a media perspective. That's and why I, I said I you got to look at the guys on the roster. They haven't even reached out. To, Jose Abreu, I don't think he – he didn't win an MVP, right? Mm, I don't think they're not the He's announced here. Okay. He's my brother is up for an MVP. Possibly he's probably going to win it. And you ain't called him yet? I mean, what's going on yeah. here? So that's why my, my third domino is kind of like, okay, Jerry what is didn't want to deal with the translator. <laughs> he said, I don't want to deal with a damn translator. Jerry, that wasn't part of the deal. I ain't speaking no Spanish. <laughs> yeah. You're know, so, you, you right, you right, though. This is a special team, potentially. Yeah. And they weren't be, they weren't factored in on the decision making. He didn't. They, he could have gave a damn. He just wanted to do like you said. The wanted to. He wants to relive the mid eighties and and make make good on a on a mistake that he Hawk Harrison made that mistake. Okay, Hawk Harrison gone, and, and we yeah. have to we have to live through this because of something that Hawk Harrison did. Yeah, but, but he, but still though, he. I mean, I know Jerry kind of lets it, let his his front office do whatever they want to do. I get that. I do get that. But at the same time, you're the damn owner, you know. Yeah. And, and, and where mean, are you? Yeah, where are of, you? None of this should be. Yeah, let's see, none of this should have gone down. At the least, you could have had him come in as a as an advisor. That's what he was doing with the yeah, Angels or yeah. Arizona. Yeah, he did it with the Angels, the Red Sox, the Diamondbacks. He's worked is in a front office role over the last ten years. He he hasn't walked away from the game. At right. all, like he's been involved, he just hasn't been in the dugout in the last nine years. And the last time yeah. he was in the dugout, Tim Anderson was in junior college, Lucas Giolito was was in high school, I believe. So, like, it, this roster isn't really familiar with him, and the game in some aspects has passed him by. But I think one thing that would be very, very intriguing 
to see as well when it comes to La Russa. And I can understand why it was an attractive job to him. You think about the oh, absolutely Oakland and St. Louis. But think about this too. Oakland, he won a championship. St. Louis, he won two championships. Chicago is the only place that he's never won a championship. And when you got your good buddy calling you, asking you, you know, do you want to come aboard and, and help me get this, this World Series back here in, on the south side, I can see how that's intriguing, especially when it didn't work out for you with the winning ugly team in 83, which was 10 years before I was born. So right. I get it. Yeah, and he was yeah, ten years before he was born. <laughs> I was one born year before, one year yeah. before me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, I was, I was one. But okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I mean, but yeah, I, I agree with you, Gabe. Gabe. Um, yeah, if he's able to kind of like, oh man, I'm able to come back to where I all started, started and win a championship. I mean, that's great. And listen, the White Sox are a potential World Series team. They might be like yeah. maybe one, two pieces away. It could be somewhere internally, or you might be able to sign somebody that be like, I like Tony. You know what I'm saying? So you might be able to get that. And if and it's very, very uh, intriguing to kind of come back and be able to uh, at least do it. I don't know mm. if it's going to work. <laughs> right. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know how. It, yeah. yeah, I don't know how these guys are going to react to it, but it has to start. Like a lot of people saying, like, man, fire him now. That's not going to happen. Exactly. You're going to you're going to see this. You're going to see the start of this movie. Mm -hmm. We just don't know how it's going to end. But yeah. you are going to see the start of it. So just got to sit back. Like I, me and Tony got tickets for next season. You know, I'm guessing if we you able to. <laughs> yeah, we we have, it, instead of like just taking the money back, it was like forget it. We just if, if you're gonna push us over the next season, we come next season. All right, fine, we're gonna do it because the team is great. The team yeah. is great, so I'm I don't want to miss out on the possibility of them basically flipping the birds to their manager, going out there and winning and going to the World Series. I don't want to miss that. So and, yeah. they, and they got my money. So I'll I'll cool. leave it at this. You know, it, it may it may play a negative role in the team uh you no know, development next year. But I think we're within our rights as fans and the media and and especially in Chicago's within their rights to uh, keep pressure on the Sox. Uh, mm -hmm. in particular management, yeah. the, the upper management and you know, like I say, ask questions of La Russa, stay on his stay on him when it comes to his ability to maintain his personal life. And you know, ask questions whenever possible to Reinsdorf and and Hahn and Kenny Williams. And just like, look, look, this thing happened. It, it affected a lot of people. It was done unilaterally. You know, you got to speak truth yeah. to power in that way. And, you know, right. hopefully hopefully it don't negatively affect the team to a point where they they come out in a slump or they have a or they underperform next year. But. I think, like I said, well, I think we're well within our rights to question this team going forward in the way that it's being ran because what they did, right? What they did with this hire potentially is a is a big setback, yeah. especially when you make promises to the fan base. Like Rick Hahn yeah. has been very adamant about being a man of his word, and he was developing a lot of great credibility among Chicago sports fans. Yeah. And yep. to go out here and say we're going to get a manager who has won recently got into a World Series recently and, and knows how to relate to our players, knows how to speak, you know, foreign languages such as Spanish and adapt with this clubhouse, this young locker room that we have, and to get a guy that's been away from the dugout for nine years, albeit is one of the winning his manager's baseball history. Like, that's... I'm already a Hall of Famer, but... Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, 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 and as, he, as he told the police officer, I'm in Hall of Fame, bro. Hall of Fame, brother. <laughs> Hall of Fame, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says it's Hulk Hogan, <laughs> right? <laughs> but and, and that's to that degree. That's why Han, you know, you could think about him being willing to jump ship because he still has a career yeah. that he yeah. needs He's to still think young. of. Yeah, Kenny Williams, he he done pretty much with his career. Mm -hmm. Rick Han, like you say, Gabe, he had to go back on his word because his owner trumped him and re and uh, acted uh, uh, unilaterally. And made him go back on his word. So if he's in a position where that's where he that's where he's being treated and he's not being trusted to make those type of decisions, he needs to go to another team where he could be more empowered and and 
he's shown that he could build up a, a franchise, yes, build up a, a, a farm system, and make a team and rebuild a, a bad uh, a team at the at the major league level. So he could have his pick of jobs out there. It wouldn't be so Chicago if he went to the Cubs. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's something that could happen too soon. Where uh, you know. Uh, 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 Theo could move to a higher position, Hoyer, but could move up, and that could, and uh, you know, uh, he could, like Han could get into Hoyer's position right now, so it, or or Theo position or whatever, you know, he could, that could definitely happen. Yeah. We shall yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see. But thanks, brothers. I really appreciate y'all. Glad we do some good old sports talk before the end here. Yeah, no and, doubt. Uh, yeah, we like I said, we'll keep up. Uh, They'll keep up with all everything these brothers doing. Keep up with us, War Media, We Are Rigor Radio.com, War on Anchor, uh, and everything. War Media on all the major platforms uh, Facebook, uh, IG, Twitter. And uh, me, K, K Mean on IG, uh, we are uh, work underscore right on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, just uh, keep, keep rocking with us and uh, we'll keep bringing more of this good stuff. We may be back. With this show next week, either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm still going over it. And um, but we'll be back next week with more in the building. Though. Yeah, that's it for now, though. Uh, they said we keep rocking in the free world with Trump <laughs> losing more and more lawsuits every day. I won all the votes. I already won. <laughs> I won. <laughs> yes. Sir. All right, peace, brothers. All right, peace. Good meeting you, guys. Yeah, nice meeting you, Demise.